Now, Royal Bank of Scotland investors have had a long wait, but a decade after the financial crisis, the state-owned bank has given concrete plans to resume its dividend payments. The Edinburgh-based lender will pay a two pence per share interim dividend subject to a final agreement with U.S. regulators. We spoke with the chief finance officer, Ewan Stevenson, and asked him about the bank's plans. It's a huge event for the bank. It's obviously 2007 was the last time we paid a dividend. Uh, we do need to sign the Department of Justice agreement with RMBS that we announced a few months ago. Once that's signed, we've got an intention that we've declared today to pay our first interim dividend of 2p per share. Um, so I think it's a really great sign of the progress the bank's made over the last couple of years to be back at this point. Two pence a share, could that increase over time? Yeah, well, we would certainly expect it to. Um, our capital ratios continue to be very healthy. Our core tier one ratio after this dividend is still above 16%. We've got a long-term target of 13, so not only are we sitting on a lot of um, surplus core tier one at the moment, you know, the bank is back to earning regular earnings and producing more capital as we go along. And could there be a special dividend? Uh, we don't know. I mean, we, we, I think that's certainly something we'll start to look at from 2019 onwards. What we've said today is we're going to work towards a regular payout ratio of 40% of our earnings. And then on top of that, we'll look to do um, special dividends and potentially buybacks as well. Mm -hmm. um, you've talked about the capital and obviously uh, the DOJ settlement out of the way now. That was uh, a big stumbling block to get over. So congratulations on that. What about uh, more prospects of returning capital to shareholders in the form of a share buyback. Could we see one before next year? Look, I, I don't think we're going to see anything before next year beyond uh, what we've announced today. Uh, we've certainly still got to pass the stress test. Those results aren't going to be out until late November. And then on top of that, obviously, uh, we'd like to get some more certainty on what outcomes are around Brexit. Uh, obviously, March is looming at the moment. Uh, and there's both a central scenario and there's a range of scenarios around that. Yeah, on Brexit then and the range of scenarios, what risks could there be to you from a no-deal scenario? Uh, for a no-deal uh, disruptive WTO scenario, I think for us, uh, certainly the biggest impact on us would be the impact on our customers and the impact on the UK economy. We're already sitting uh, in 2018 with the lowest growth that we've seen uh, since 2009. Uh, and the, while the outlook for 19 at the moment for the, is similar to 18, I think risks are skewed to the downside if, if we do get into a WTA scenario. In that sense, then, could your dividend program and your plans around that change depending on the Brexit scenario? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we are being cautious at the moment. You'll see today in our results our liquidity ratios are very strong. I think we'll continue to keep our capital ratios strong. And we are cautious on the outlook for credit in some sectors. Mm. You talk about the capital ratios being strong for the second quarter. We're looking at 16.1 per cent. Are you confident about passing the stress test? Uh, uh, look, we're, we're quietly confident that we've built a much more resilient uh, balance sheet. Uh, we know even in 2017, we increased our core tier one by 250 basis points. Getting the RMBS settled with the DOJ was another important milestone. So, uh, you know, I don't want to predict how we'll do in those results, but we certainly feel uh, we're getting progressively more resilient as time goes by. Yeah, that 16.1% number down a little from the 16.4% in Q1. Can you explain that? Yeah, so we did two big things in the quarter. Uh, firstly, we've settled with the DOJ and we had to take another billion pounds of provisions into the number. Uh, and secondly, uh, we agreed a further set of top-up contributions into the pension plan. So we've agreed to put a further two billion pounds this year into our pension plan. If you back those two things out, what you'll see is over 100 basis points of core tier one accretion during the quarter. Hmm. We've already talked about the milestone of the $4.9 uh, billion deal with the GO DOJ, but also the UK government selling a £2.5 billion stake in June. Now, the government has said that it plans to sell about £15 billion of stock over five years in equal portions uh, of £3 billion. Does this mean we won't get another government stake sale until next year, or could we still get one this year? Uh, it's very much up to them as to when and how they want to sell stock. I mean, for us, all we can do is control what what we can, can, can control. I think with today's results, what you've seen is continued progress in the core bank, and paying that dividend, I think, will be another important milestone. One of the things we've had over recent years is a relatively restricted 
set of shareholders who want to invest in us without us being able to pay a dividend. So I think paying that dividend will help the government as well in terms of the audience that they can sell stock to. Right. So in terms of that then, those are the conditions do you think that could draw more institutional investors rather than hedge funds? Uh, over time, I think we're certainly trying to attract a greater proportion of uh, traditional long-only fund into our shareholder base. Uh, we have seen that migration beginning, but we'd certainly think that paying the dividend will certainly help progress on that front. Mm -hmm. um, you've announced your departure, of course, uh, from RBS. Uh, will this be the last time I'll be speaking to you on quarterly earnings? Not sure, but uh, I mean, I've got my head down at the moment trying to work with Ross. I'm continuing to make progress. There was certainly a natural inflection point that you can see in terms of today's results uh, for me to sort of consider uh, taking on another role. Uh, but for the time being, I'm here and uh, delighted to see the progress we're making.